Edgerix Nebula. The hit mobile game Terra Genesis was all about taking a new world and bringing it to life over time, from a barren wasteland to a verdant paradise. But before we can achieve a new Earth, humans must first learn to adapt and survive in those original, inhospitable climates. Extreme temperatures, unbearable pressure, and storms of dust or geomagnetic pulses unlike anything ever experienced before. We must withstand all of it if we are to make new homes for humanity. Those first moments, the first rockets, the first settlements, the first sunrises and sunsets, will be critical not only to our future as a spacefaring species, but our ultimate survival in this universe. Before our giant leap comes our first small steps. Before we etch our story into the echelons of time in a new world, we must first bear witness to its magnificent emptiness. Before we make history, we must first make landfall. Available on iOS and Android. Welcome to Settle the Stars. Hey folks, this is Rachel Emerson, filling in for Lacey Hannon. Last episode, she talked about the constellation Ophiuchus. This week, we'll look at Scorpius, home to the big star Antares and some seriously interesting exoplanets. We'll find out why Scorpius can't play nice with Orion, how the constellation has shrunk in the sky, and why its brightest object is one of the largest stars visible to the naked eye. And so red, it's often confused with the red planet. Not only is Antares one of the largest stars you can see when you turn your head toward the heavens, it's also among the most luminous stars in the sky. Only 15 are more radiant. This luster makes Antares the most visible resident of Scorpius, despite being about 550 light years away. Set in the arachnid's heart, Antares makes Scorpius easy to see against the backdrop of the Milky Way, especially in spring and summer, dangling like a fish hook. Some say it looks more like an S. If you think of it as a scorpion, the star Shuba is at the head of the arachnid, and Shaula puts the stinger in the tail. In July and August, in the northern hemisphere, Scorpius sits to the south and is best seen around 10 p.m. Scorpius rises when Orion sinks in the sky, and according to Greek mythology, there's a reason they both can't sit in the sky at the same time. The tale goes that Zeus's wife, Hera, disliked Orion's arrogance, disgusted when the hunter boasted that he could kill every living creature and that nothing alive could harm him. So, she set a scorpion down on a trail he frequented. And of course, Orion stepped on it, felt the sting of its tail, and suffered a painful death. A tiny little crawler brings down the mighty hunter. Artemis, god of the hunt, fancied Orion, however. Often running with him at night in search of prey, she insisted that Zeus pay tribute to her fallen friend by placing him in the heavens along with his two dogs. And so Zeus did. Hera thought this was not fair to the scorpion, who proved the stronger predator, and she leaned on Zeus to give the scorpion the same honor. And so Zeus did. But the king of the gods made sure to put the scorpion and the hunter on opposite sides of the celestial sphere to avoid any problems, which is why they keep out of each other's way. Some say the scorpion still chases Orion through the sky, but never gets close. Chiron, the centaur, aka Sagittarius the Archer, has his bow aimed at the scorpion should he ever catch up. The Greeks used to see the shiniest stars in the constellation of Libra as the legs of the scorpion, but they cut them off long ago to make the scales of justice a constellation of their own. When the people of ancient Sumer turned their eyes to the sky, they too saw a stinger attached to the end of a scorpion. In the Babylonian star catalogs of 1100 BC, this string of stars was known as Gaba Gertab, or the breast of the scorpion. The Egyptians saw in Antares the goddess Serket, who was a protector and nurturer, and who was also associated with the venomous little scurrying arachnid. Other cultures, of course, saw other things in this part of the sky. The Japanese looked up and saw these stars as a brooding swan. The Chinese saw a dragon. 
Hawaiians thought the scorpion looked like a fish hook, a description many sky watchers use to describe the constellation today. Antares sits in the torso of the scorpion, near its head, also known as Alpha Scorpii. It's a red giant and has a neighbor so close it's considered a binary star. At two magnitude, Scorpii B is so beta as to be relatively inconsequential when compared to Antares, aka Scorpia A. Most everything in the night sky would seem small up against Antares A, a supergiant. Like other supergiants, the alpha star of Scorpius has used up the hydrogen in its core, and the core has begun to contract. The gravity involved in this contraction increases the temperature, as fusion begins in a shell around the core. This causes the star to expand outward, at which point the temperature actually decreases, giving it a red glow. Many observers confuse Antares with Mars because of its crimson hue and bright personality. Antares takes its name from this similarity, with the prefix ant for opposing, and the suffix Ares, the Greek name for Mars, the god of war. Despite the thermonuclear fusion going on at its center, Antares is a cool star. Our sun, which is some 700 times smaller, is actually 40% hotter than Antares. Even so, Antares is 10,000 times brighter than the sun. The relative radiance is due to the fact that Antares is so damn big. The star is simply ginormous, and scientists recently found it's even larger than previously thought. In June of 2020, sky watchers using the ALMA array in Chile and the Jansky Very Large Array in New Mexico revealed the star's profile, having created the most detailed map of a stellar atmosphere outside of our own sun. They discovered that Antares' atmosphere radiates out far farther than they'd imagined. In fact, if Antares sat where our sun sits, it would stretch all the way out past Saturn and halfway to Uranus, rather than back near Mars where they previously thought. In this scenario, the Earth would be roasting in its photosphere. The visible light is only a fraction of energy this thing emits. Antares pumps out almost 80,000 times the energy that the sun does. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. For business owners, it's so easy to post a job you're trying to fill. Just add the position and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile and then voila! LinkedIn offers simple tools like screening questions that help you find the right person for the job. Personally, as a newish hire for Edgeworks, LinkedIn made it easy for me to sift through the job listings that didn't quite fit my skill set. I even received email alerts when new jobs were posted that fit my skill set. As the year comes to an end, you can finish the year strong by finding the right team member for your business. And right now, LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash stars. That's linkedin.com slash stars to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Antares is just one of the wonders found within Scorpius. The constellation plays host to an array of celestial bodies with unique designations. Four Messier objects, all of them star clusters, are in this part of the sky. The Butterfly Cluster, M6, is made up of 80 stars that seem to form the wings of a butterfly, making some of the most striking photos ever taken by a sky telescope. M80, one of the others, is almost the densest star clusters in our galaxy. M4 is the closest globular cluster to Earth, at just 5,500 light years away. Sitting next to Antares, it's also among the easiest globular clusters to find, and it was the first globular cluster discovered in which astronomers could resolve individual stars. I just like saying globular cluster. With a magnitude of about 5.9, a width of about 75 light years, and a population of more than 100,000 stars, it pops out of a telescope and was first noted by Philippe Loy de Chizou in 1745. The constellation is also where astronomers found U Scorpii, a rare reoccurring nova about 40,000 light years away. 
Like spoiled children, these stars have regular outbursts, moments in galactic time where their luminosity explodes by as much as 10,000 times before they fade again. There are only 10 known in the Milky Way. The pattern begins when a white dwarf, essentially the spent carcass of a star, borrows some material from a neighbor. When it accumulates enough, it creates pressure that eventually builds to a thermonuclear explosion. U Scorpii has done this more times than any other stellar object ever recorded. English astronomer N.R. Pogson first saw it in 1863 when it flared to 9.1 magnitude in May and was gone by June. It has repeated this pattern, glowing dramatically every 10 years or so, and then all but disappearing, even to the telescopic eye. In June 2022, it exploded to a 7.8 magnitude, so it won't be due for another decade. Scorpius also boasts some notable exoplanets of the kind that get the astrophysicists excited. One of these, with the catchy name PSRB 1620-26b, is extraordinarily old, estimated to have 12.7 billion candles on its birthday cake, which makes it just a billion years younger than the universe itself. Because of this, it's earned the nickname Methuselah, after the oldest character in the Bible, though it's probably not quite so hairy. But it's planets like Gliese 667 CC, a super Earth, four times the size of Gaia, orbiting a red dwarf less than 25 light years from us, that really keeps astronomers up at night. Scientists at the University of Puerto Rico's Arecibo Planetary Inability Laboratory think it could potentially be a future home for us due to its rocky surface and the possibility of water on it. In fact, in recent years, Gliese 667cc has eclipsed Kepler-22b as the it planet, the most Earth-like world outside of our solar system, and perhaps the most hospitable piece of rock out there. Even Hollywood thinks so. In the movie Alien vs. Predator, the planet was the first in the galaxy to be terraformed. So why so promising? The Institute of Theoretical Astrophysics lists the temperature, which could be a balmy 86 degrees, a future Florida, the planet receives about 90% of the solar energy the Earth does, and water could easily exist under the conditions found here. One side is tidally locked, meaning that it always faces away from its host star, which could cool things. But they've thought that the atmosphere might still be warm enough to allow for life. It's not all sunny, however. Gliese C, the star around which the planet rotates, is likely to emit flares, bursts of hugely powerful energy that could disrupt life. The gravity on the planet would be very heavy, making the possibility of skipping down a sidewalk more difficult. And the weight of all that gravity could also create a denser atmosphere that could be less favorable for beach days. Or life at all. In 2013, scientists discovered that the side facing its sun could heat up to 300 times hotter than the Earth during some orbits. So, put away your towels and sand trowels, and further study might be needed. Gliese 667cc is not the only planet in the Gliese star system to be an intriguing future home. Two others, Gliese 667ce and Gliese 667cf, have also been deemed potentially habitable, just not quite as enticingly so. There's plenty to like between the grasping pincers and stinging tail of the scorpion. Exciting new worlds, intriguing nebula, old stars. But like the rest of the known universe, it's an ever-changing place. Thanks to the brightness of Antares, Scorpius is currently very easy to find. It won't always be so. Because of its supergiant status, Antares is sadly dying. Soon, speaking in astronomical terms, it will collapse in on itself precipitating a massive supernova that will give Earth observers a spectacular show. A tiny neutron will be left as the pumping heart of the scorpion. The supernova may be so intense it will create a black hole, and the scorpion's heart will die. But, as one star does, others will be born, and the cosmos will continue to fascinate those of us down here, and give us plenty to talk about. We hope you enjoyed today's tale. 
Join us next time for a look at Hercules. Until then, happy terraforming. Settle the Stars is brought to you by Edgeworks Nebula, a platform for intriguing and informative podcasts by Edgeworks Entertainment. Edgeworks Nebula.